It's time for the Business of Life with Coach Ron Tunick and Jim Piccarillo. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so, such an honor to, uh, yeah, I That's can fine. hear myself. Such an honor to be on the uh, air show today, Total Financial Solutions, Inc. I'm dedicating the show today to a fabulous lady, a mother of a very successful businessman, Donna Hallaby. How are you? Lady, you did a hell of a job with your son. What a nice man! I mean, I you really to some of that coming in. That we guy, dedicated the last fifteen. Oh, really? Yeah, we dedicated the last twenty minutes of the show to you. That so guy. the whole show Where today. Was that guy, when I was growing up, I need somebody like that. You know what? Uh, I told I him need about somebody like that. Now, what the heck? I'm gonna. Up. I'll bring you next door. You can t- meet him. But he's very successful. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about his mother for a second. Donna I don't raises. Donna. He was a police officer. Oh, got right. into a severe car accident. And then became a very successful financial planner. Wow. He's told me all kinds of stories. Mm-hmm. He told me a, a recent client went to a major financial brokerage house. Uh, I belong to one. Mm-hmm. Uh, took $3,800 a month, something like that, $3,300, $3,800 a month. The brokerage house was charging him $1,700 a month fee. And wow. he caught it. And Holy he, cow. How would I know? Yeah. How, what would I catch? Well, they usually take 1%. 1% is about average. Of your portfolio. I don't even know if that's realistic yeah. or not. Anyway, right. the that show's was the last the, hour. Let's talk about this hour. This hour is called the Business Life. 20 years doing the show. Uh, Jim and I have been invited to do a na- – well, we are a national show. I, we've got listeners in Oregon, Wyoming, Florida, uh, Louisiana, New York. Uh, Balt- where's Baltimore? Is that a state? Yeah, Maryland, baby. Oh, Maryland. Uh, the show's Indeed. called the Business Life. We're on KCS 1220 AM, and you can listen to us on – hometownstation.com, or the best radio app in the country. Just go to the App Store and download KHS 1220 AM. So the show literally is about nothing. You're going to learn nothing when you listen to the show. You're going to forget 99.99% of the show. We're here for an hour just to maybe put a smile on your face. And maybe, maybe maybe get you thinking a little bit. You know, you maybe, may, We may not solve anything, but we may get you thinking. Well, on Block B today, you know? we're going to talk about my yeah. wife's favorite subject, which is wine. Yeah. Why? Oh, we got a great guest today. Yeah, I met him out in our. Doug he's in Minnick. the green room where we yep, got food. He's in the green room. We got bagels, oh, cream cheese. What a setup! Sam, out there. What a setup here Man, at Cage Tales. Big 24. green room. Wow, you need to come to the station. Do we have an applause? Uh, I thought we had a studio audience. I guess we don't. We used to have a studio. Let's, audience. let's set up real quick, though. Uh, we got uh, in our second half. We got our uh, guest this week. It's going to be Doug Minnick on whining, right? Well, he is a new owner here in town. He has a business here in downtown New Hall called Double Trouble. It's right on the corner of 8th and Main. It's a great location. It's a wine tasting room. Very hip, very cool. There's two wineries in there. We're going to tell you more about it, and you're going to learn all about it. It's going to be a fun second half hour. And I can't wait to go to that place. Oh, you got to go. music, entertainment, it's, right? Well, yeah. He, they're, they're musicians, and they started a winery. But, you know, we'll get to that later. There's a lot going on. You know, I always I always come there, and I'm wondering, you know, I haven't seen you in a couple of days. i got to know what's bugging you, Coach. I'm going to tell you what's, what's bugging, bugging me. Coach? Thank you, Cody. Uh, you're a little late with that. Uh, be a little bit earlier next time. Uh, before I tell you what's really bugging me, yeah. I've got to say uh, a little prayer for Houston. The, the pictures are devastating. I mean, I I got emotional last night and this yeah. morning watching these pictures. Yeah. I want to do something. I, I don't know what to do. I'm too old to get in a boat. Well, you give money to whoever can get down there and help these people. You yeah, know, I don't think you and I are going to go out and load a truck tomorrow and drive it down there. But you know, there are people who are doing that and doing those things. So JJ Watt, the Houston yeah. athlete, uh, all he wanted to do is raise a half a million. He's raised over a million dollars. That's awesome. JJ Watt, uh, I gave money to the Red Cross, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a check. I don't know where do you go to check out charities. There must be a place to go to see if the charity. Oh, there's tons online. There's a lot of GoFundMe's set up now. Like uh, they're legit, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I'm hoping they are, but anybody can set up uh, uh, go GoFundMe accounts. So you got to check them out for All sure. Right, but check them out. There's a lot of legit places. You know, so the National our, Red Cross is a great place to start. I think American Red Cross. Our prayers, uh, Jim and I, from the show called The Business Life and Cody. Uh, incidentally, come up in a few minutes. We're going to have the Millennial Minute. I'm every week. It's one of my favorite subjects on our show where we hear. Uh, does your mother know that you're actually doing this? Where, do, what is your, where does your mother think you are right now? In the library studying? Does yeah. she know you have a job? Of course, yeah. She, she does? Okay. Because you look like you're maybe 16 years old. Uh, I'll tell you what's. We talked about this three weeks ago, that technology is t- taking over the world. Robots are taking over the world. Are we into quick hits? 
Yeah. Uh, don't we have a? Don't we have a? Thing? You gotta give us a heads up. Quick hits. Know. Okay. Quick hits. Let's go. Do that one more time. Yeah. <laughs> quick hits. We're trying to get the show. Sorry, better. I thought we were still on what's bugging you, man. Okay, we've moved on to quick hits where we're uh, going to talk oh, about. Oh, there was one more thing that's uh, bugging uh, me. What's get bugging that me? Uh, bug, Get that oh, other bugging me thing back. Quick, get it back. What's bugging, Coach? Oh, God, a, the train's foot, off the tracks again, and we foot, just got going. <laughs> a football coach just got a contract for $53 million. What? Dollars. No way. Yeah. Where is 50, this? Clemson. Yeah. Dabo Sweeney. Clemson. I mean, if you're a professor, wow. j- j- stay with me on this. Okay? I'm with you already. Uh, you're, uh, first of all, professors are overpaid, agreed or not. Uh, Overpaid. Not all of Come them. Come on, no, Jim. No, I don't think all Come of them. Come on, Jim. If you're tenured, maybe, I guess. One hundred and fifty to 200000 They they teach one class a week, maybe two, yeah. and you have to buy their book? Yeah. I should have been a professor, but go ahead. I don't know. So I, you're saying it's... it's it's. Uh, I'm a jock and you're not, right? Yeah. But do you, you don't agree with $53 no, million for a football it's coach? Come it's on. ridiculous. Same deal. Really? But here's, the, here's what my wife said, because we really got it in this morning, uh-huh. my little wife, Ellen. She made a good point because she likes football. She said, how much does the program bring in a year? Right. And I said, probably about uh, anywhere from $100 million. And She said, really? I yeah. said, yeah, $100 million. Well, most major colleges or most universities, the uh, – $100 million from the football the money, program. The money always comes from the football program, right. and it right. funds all the other programs, right. tennis, volleyball, things that you know don't have big crowds. You're but a, but oh, my my point would be this: Why well, don't what why is don't your they, point? Well, why don't they pay the guy? Why don't they pay the kids, the athletes? I think they should be. They're paid. starting to. You bring in a hundred million dollars into your program, you should be paid. They're starting to. Yeah, they're starting to pay the kids. The kids get. Thanks for keeping turning my headphones up. That's nice. <laughs> the kids, the kids get a per diem now. First yeah. of all, they get free food. Yeah. Have you ever been to the University of Oregon to look at our facilities? No, I'm, I need to take. I'm you. not that lucky. I, I'm not in that crowd. I can get <laughs> I can get you in that crowd. I'm not, I'm not in the Nike crowd. I can get you it's in. It's all the, Nike money, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be that nice if Nike hadn't have dumped all that money in it. All right, we're I'm done. I'm just saying, don't you think? Let's move on. What's our Are next? We had our subject? two minutes yet. Yeah, we're done. What's our next subject? Oh, <laughs> quick hits. Uh, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, maybe a month ago, we talked about technology uh, taking over everything. Now there's a restaurant, and you said you know of one in Vegas, but this one's in Philadelphia. Eats. Wow. A a a machine serves you. You don't meet anybody. Yeah. There, there's nobody there. Well, it's perfect for this kind of day and age. Nobody wants. So to what, if your anybody. food comes too cold or too hot or too this, or who are you going to complain to? The robot? Your app. You go on an app and put it. <laughs> yeah. Put it your complaint. <laughs> you buy you buy stuff online. I know you do. I do. I buy okay. stuff, including so, cars, unseen. Like, uh oh. <laughs> That's leaking oil. Yeah. So you buy so- shh, shh. so you buy something online. Yeah. And who do you complain to? Somebody in India? Well, there. Come on, Jim. Probably, but there are support uh, online support staffs. I've been on a line several times this week trying to get things taken care of, but it's frustrating. Like um, I was trying to set up my new website. This through, is Bob. Through I, this Blue is Host. Bob. Can I, I help you? You know, most most websites now don't even have a phone number. It's I all know. Like, no, you know, there's I, no way to call anyone. This you is just, what I'm know, saying. Drives me nuts. When did you figure this out? Uh, yesterday. Jim Piccarillo and the coach uh, on the show, 20 years in the making, the business of life. So when you look at um, moving forward in our society today, uh, I'll tell you uh, something that I don't understand. 112 degrees yesterday. <laughs> 112 degrees here right. in Santa Clarita. Right. How can you do anything? I didn't see any. But here's the best thing about it. Nobody was on the street. Yeah. The streets were. Did you get out yesterday at all? No, I stayed inside and put together an old vintage stereo system that I've been waiting to do. It's like a winter day. You remember when you get snowed in? We did we puzzles. Got, you didn't do puzzles? Well, no, but not yesterday. But you, it was like a heat day. It wasn't a snow day. It was a heat day. I just couldn't move, couldn't walk anywhere. No, and, that's and a you good know, the, po- the, the scary thing is we weren't even the worst off in the country. Think about it. The weather we're having is nothing compared to what's going on down in Houston. I mean, and, ar- and around the country. This has been a summer of crazy weather all across the country. So, you know. So is global warming is a reality? I don't know. I mean. I, Glaciers I, are melting. Don't, well, yeah. You're progressive. You don't care about this stuff? I do care. And I do think, uh, you know. The, the I'm a conservative and I care about this stuff. Oh, definitely. Everything's warming up. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of this is related to climate change. But, you know, right now everyone's in denial. But I'm not in denial. 
I mean, let's let's talk about the things we know, though. Let's look at the hurricane this week or the tropical storm, whatever they're calling it now. Here's what I'm always amazed at. It's like um, FEMA is, even with all this early warning, they're never ready. I don't get how, and I'm not blaming them. I'm not blaming anyone. This was the mother of all storms. It dumped more rain on, you know, in one day than it did an entire year. There's nothing you can do about that. But the preparation and the prep doesn't seem to be there anymore. I don't think there's people making the everyday logical decisions that we need in this country to, to stay afloat. I'm talking just common sense thing, not political stuff. Common sense, how do we keep our country running? No, it's a good point. Uh, I, went, I went to that for place first, but a couple of issues. Number one rainstorm in the history of the United States. Right. Number one. Number two, I heard some meteorologists say anywhere from 100,000 to a million years, this would never occur again. Yeah. B we're done? Let's Cody? do another two on that one. Let's Can you give me let's another, keep another two here? Yeah. And I like a little audience uh, uh, support. If you have it. Well, if you'd have come to the prep rehearsal meeting, you could have got that. Interview. I was Sorry. eating bagel You're in the green room. Cream, uh, eating, yeah. Oh, man, have you seen our that layout? That is spread. I can't Unbelievable. That. That's where the all our budget goes. Yeah, the show's doesn't called. doesn't go into production. It goes into green room, man. <laughs> the show's called The Business Life, 20 Years in the Making. All over the country you can hear our show. Uh, you can hear it locally on hometownstation.com, or we have the best radio app in the country. I'm not kidding when you say that. Go to the App Store, KHTS 1220 AM. The show's dedicated today to Donna Hallaby. Uh, she did one hell of a job raising her son. Back to uh, just the weather, the hurricane, uh, the preparation. I agree with you. I, you know, well, how about evacuation? Why didn't they evacuate some of these he, people? The, he had a, he had a, the mayor uh, said that he thought it would cause more serious injuries and problems, uh, and maybe he was right. I don't know. But where I don't know. It's a good point. So I mean, how people, do you prepare? People sitting in hospitals and senior citizen homes with water up to their waist. Did you I mean, see that picture? Sh shouldn't they have tried to move some of those people? And then I just heard, I just heard another thing coming in on the radio. There's a, there's a uh, facility with 350 alligators, you know, like some kind of facility that keeps alligators in Beaumont, Texas. And the storm just hit Beaumont this morning. They're afraid 350 alligators are going to get out in the water. Now think about this. You you make it through. You're waiting out. You got all your possessions over your head, and now you got to worry about an alligator in the water. As crazy as that sounds, I mean, think about that. Well, I have a lot to think about today. First of all, we're blessed. Uh, it is a heat day. I want to get back to that's funny. Uh, on a heat day, uh, people are indoors. They're not out. It it affects everything. It affects your energy level. It, oh yeah. People aren't shopping. Yeah. Uh, the streets are clear. But, you know, what I'm concerned, we're going to get the alert that we're going to be. Do you remember the rolling blackouts? Are oh, we yeah. going to get a rolling blackout here? I think we've soon? had a few of those already this year. we got we got to notice. Um, I tell you, here, here's you another, got to notice? Here's another thing. You, you know, in a, I don't know that we're ready for uh, major disasters of, of natural disasters or man-made disasters. I went to Northridge this morning. You cannot get out of this valley on I-5. You can't get out of the valley on I-14. In the event of a disaster, how is everybody going to get out or get in? Well, There's, you lived here when uh, the earthquake. I what, did. So it was a it was a disaster. It was horrible. Well, you know, the the freeway fell. You couldn't get out of here. You had to use the, the old road, and they'd wave through sixty okay, cars so, and then wave through sixty so, more. But since then, population's probably tripled or quadrupled. We own. Uh, our government. We own. We vote people in. Why? See, this is. I don't want to get off on a, a tangent because only I know Cody's going to cut me off. But the apathy of the public. We're not down at City Hall asking our our leaders to to do a better job of preparing. I don't think it's the apathy of the public. I think it's the apathy of the leaders. This, and I'm talking from a national level all the way down to a city level. Level. Although we live in a city that's very. Um, very well put together, well, very well budgeted yes. to an extent. Yes, but I'm talking about when you go out to I-5 right now because of the con they decided to put this big construction hub in right at the mouth of the valley, so traffic's backing up all the way to Lake Castaic now. There's no way to get out of here. On on just an average day, can you imagine if there wasn't an emergency? There's I'm going no to give you out. a little secret. I hope nobody's listening all to right. our show. I take the 126 no matter where. If I have to go into LA, I take the 126. <laughs> no, I, I get I go over Grimes Canyon yeah, and, and drop I, in. Yeah, right. Then I drop in on the 23 freeway. Right. And if I have to go into Santa Monica, yeah. I'll take the coast. Wow. It's I I like to keep moving. Yeah. I can't sit. I, I'm kind of the same way. I'll drive any length to not sit in farther, traffic, but, but uh, faster. You're also a man of leisure. You have that kind of time. 
I'm going to head to Santa Monica. I've got four and a half hours. I'll just go over Grimes Canyon and around Thousand yeah. Oaks. You know, so. Yeah, and then I listen to KHTS, and, and I have a great time. The show is called The Business of Life. Here's one thing on Quick Hits. Uh, the cost of cancer drugs, Jim, Ooh. is so bizarre. Uh, you and I All are, drugs, but yeah. You and I are blessed that we're healthy. But, so, you know, so there's a great percentage of the population that has this horrible uh, cancer, this horrible disease that we can't seem to get a, a handle on. Uh, and I get bugged a lot of times because hundreds of millions of dollars are paid to entertainers and sports figures. If that money went into cancer research, if, that, if some of this money went back to communities to help out the hospitals so that hospitals would be more modernized, uh, I'd feel better. But look at uh, USA Today, cancer drugs has a phenomenal cost. And I but, get but again, it. Huh? you've heard it before. The money's not in the cure; it's in the well the, treatment. The, the, the treatment. So the, they're, they're not going to they're going to not going to solve it, even if they had the money. No, no, no. Well, that's terrible to say something like that. Well. That was Jim Piccarello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to be more positive. When you look at they, they're talking about they spend millions of dollars in R and D, research and development. So you, they have to pay these chemists. Have you ever looked through like a, a microscope? You yeah. never yes. looked? No, yeah. you haven't. Of course I have. Cody, haven't. he has not looked through a I microscope. Got a chemistry set in the fourth grade. <laughs> yeah, exactly, ladies and gentlemen. That's Jim Have, have I looked this week or last year? No, but. Uh, have you, do you even know what an amoeba is? That's why we are paying people millions of dollars does to look Does Brenda listen to this show? <laughs> I don't think Mike, so. She doesn't, does so. she? How about Michael? Uh, yeah, he does. He does. Uh, Michael. So tell your dad what an amoeba is. You find it through a microscope. My God, What's son. What's that got to do with anything? Because the cost of hiring a chemist and these biologists. So they have to charge these, 100 times what the drug the, costs elsewhere? These, they How make, come Canada and other European countries don't have that problem with uh, prescription drugs? Why are their drugs? I can't answer well, every question. I just want question. to know. Why are our drugs so expensive? Prescription why do drugs? people come to the United States to have major surgery? Why do people come to the United States to get their health care? Good doctors, maybe. Thank you. You maybe. just answered your question. Well, well you asked so me a question. We have, I gave you the answer. I, you know, we have better trained. Uh, we have better trained people here. Uh, we have the FDA. Whether you like it or not, uh, think about this: the FDA protects us from uh, uh, losing our lives by taking some stupid drug that hasn't been tested properly. No, I agree with that. If the FDA is doing their job, so does FEMA, so does any federal agency. Well, when you take uh, homeopathic drugs, when you take vitamins, do you know where those vitamins or drugs are made? No, you don't. You don't. You don't. Did I say that? Uh, Cody, do you You're take, right. I don't. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't take uh, uh, Cody, at, at, you're what, 21? 25, but, you know. Close. You're 25? He tells you that every week. I know. So do you take any homeopathic anything, vitamin D, vitamin C? Do you take any vitamins? No. Okay. Let's move on. This show is called The Business Life. Sorry, we can't all be as healthy as you. <laughs> I take vitamin D. Jack Lalane over here. <laughs> Wait a second. What, do you swim five miles a morning? Don't you? Do you, you bike into here and walk in the, here while you're eating your vitamins? The show's called uh, The Business Life. Jim Piccolo. I know the drive through you go through, and it does not have any vitamins for Stop sale. it. He catches me one day, maybe two days. I go through. Uh, your car is hard to miss in that drive through man. It barely D's. fits through there, right? They have the best coffee, Mickey D's coffee. Have you ever had their coffee? Well, yeah. whose coffee do you drink, Cody? Um, I got a Keurig recently, so I guess uh, Starbucks. That's not coffee. I'm Keurig. sorry. That is not coffee. What do you, Are you a coffee drinker? Yeah, my wife grinds our beans every morning. Of course she does. And uh, we, we drink, uh, what is the name of that? Uh, I don't know. Who some, can afford kind a grinder? Of what kind of money do you have that you have a grinder? A gr and and oh, you yeah. have a wife that grinds oh, yeah. coffee? Well, she's crazy. You know, she loves good coffee. What can but, I say? But uh, what did you, you take it out of those little cups? That's not real coffee. Yeah. I mean, it's Go, close it's, enough. You know. I'll give you money. I'll give you $2 or $3. Seriously. So for next week, I'm going to give you $3. I want you to go to Mickey D's and, and, come, and drink their coffee versus your little, uh, what is it called? A Keurig. 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 I have one of those, too, over in my office. But um, Stumptown. Stumptown Coffee. We get that from uh, Whole Foods and Gelson's. Oh, Stumptown. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. You know who just bought Whole Foods? Have you been in Whole we, Foods we get since one Amazon said, bought them? Uh, we were there yesterday. My wife was actually telling me the prices. Was how, it how, they come down? Yeah. 
Was, was salmon it? used to be twelve ninety nine a pound? It's nine ninety nine a pound. Oh my God, pound. Brenda, call in on the station. Three, I want to tell you every price list. I yeah, mean, Brenda, you know. call if you're listening. I guess, anybody listening, call in if you've been over to Whole Foods. I've got to find out. Was it packed? Or did people? This, am, this Whole Foods in our town just does real regular no steady kidding. business. It doesn't matter what the prices are. No kidding, are. it's you know, always will, busy. People will pay for good food. The only thing is, their their uh, what do you call it? Where uh, the health bar, the food bar, what does that call it? When uh, the, where they have food and you can put it in a little box. What's that called? Salad, salad bar, bar. Salad bar. It's too healthy. It's boring. It's good. It's boring. But they have a lot of little cool food. No, it's, there. Yeah, it's boring. We got to take a break. She'll call business like if you're a wine drinker. If, if, if you like wine or whining, uh, the, the next half an hour is going to be perfect for you. We'll be right back. The Business Live, KCTS 1220 AM, Jim Piccarello and the coach. Drugs or alcohol abuse can tear a family apart. In Santa Clarita, just like everywhere else, it's an epidemic. The Way Out Recovery is here to help. Call them now at 296-4444 or visit them on the web at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. The Way Out offers outpatient treatment for adolescents, adults, and family members. The Way Out is compassionate, caring, professional, and confidential. You and your family don't have to suffer any longer. Call The Way Out Recovery now, 296-4444, or visit thewayoutrecoveryscv.com and make an appointment. Asking for help is the first step. Looking for a fun day with the kids? Visit Ice Station Valencia. With three rinks, Ice Station offers every type of skating program imaginable, from ice hockey and figure skating to public skating sessions every day. Ice Station is a great place to bring a group, so ask about our special group rates. Our glass-enclosed restaurant, The Grill, offers a scrumptious array of tasty snacks and entrees. For info, call 775-8686 or skate to the net, www.icestation.net. Ice Station Valencia, right across the street from Valencia High School. There's only one Santa Clarita plastic surgeon who is Yale-trained and board-certified. Dr. Justin Heller. To be a board certified plastic surgeon like myself, what that truly entails is about five to seven years of honed surgical training in reconstructive, all areas, as well as aesthetic, so which means your facelifts, your breast augmentations, your body contouring, true training, and board certification. In fact, that's the only board certified area that can be achieved in this realm. Dr. Justin Heller. Warm, understanding, always available for guidance because he's local. Hellerplasticsurgery.com. Sweet, salty, tastiest, bacon and pancakeiest, big yawns are okay, yummy syrups, yes way, butter pecan, blueberry, old-fashioned strawberry, never empty coffee pot, mom says it hits the spot, I'm the ton of fluffiest, dad tucks the scruffiest, scrambled eggy, pepper shaky, orange juicy, wide awake, your stuff, french toastiest, waffles with the mustiest, buttermilky, smooth and silky, tastes great, love on a plate. IHOP, everything you love about breakfast. You choose your dry cleaner for convenience. Maybe it's time to choose a dry cleaner that is not only convenient, but does quality work at a reasonable price. Town Cleaners. They're in the center of our valley, and they offer free pickup and delivery anywhere in Santa Clarita. Town Cleaners, a dry cleaner who goes the extra step. Their stringent quality control ensures the highest quality cleaning and pressing for your garments. And now through February, save 50% on all dry cleaning orders. Town Cleaners on Soledad and Rainbow Glen. Hometown, your hometown station. Welcome back to the business life. If you've got something better to do, go do it. Uh, unless, unless you like wine. And if you like wine, call everybody you know. Call your neighbors. And put the glass down just for a second. And listen to my partner, Jim Piccarello, because he wants to make this introduction I can't wait to go down and visit this store, which is right down the street, huh, Jimmy? Can't believe you've not been in there. It's literally next door. I, you know what? I, I get my car and I go back to my estate. Yeah, I know. And lock my your gates. driver just takes you out of here. Yeah. All right. Okay, folks. Listen, we got a great guest today. We're really excited. Uh, I have been a proponent of the revitalization of downtown Newhall for quite a while. And anyone who's lived out here for the last 20 years, we've been hearing for years, you know, you're getting this, you're getting that, you're getting a new theater, you're getting some restaurants. We're finally getting it. It's actually very cool. There's a pretty good, good little scene going on down here. And uh, our guest today is a guy named Doug Minnick, and uh, Doug is actually doing something down here. He is one of the owners of Double Trouble Wine Tasting Room. 
here in downtown Newhall on 8th and Main. If you haven't been over there, please check it out. Awesome, cool place with awesome, cool people. Uh, Doug uh, has a winery called Hoy Poloi. What a cool name. What the heck does that mean, Doug? And welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, hoi polloi, I always thought it meant uh, the elite, the upper crust, or hobnobbing with the hoi polloi. Uh, <laughs> in fact, it means the opposite. It means the great unwashed, the, the, the commoners, the riffraff, which is also the name of our wine club. Um, we thought that fit us a little better anyway, and uh, it's also the name of a Three Stooges movie. Right. And... Uh, there's a long story behind that, but uh, I have two partners, Ted and Dan. There's three of us. If you ever saw us work, you would understand the parallels with the Three Stooges, and we felt that this, <laughs> this was an appropriate name. Too many metaphors to pass up. I love it. I love it. Now, there's actually, uh, well, that fits us perfect. Hoi polloi, you know? Fits we're, you we're, the, we're the kind of guys speak that... For uh, <laughs> speak for yourself. It <laughs> now, fits you perfectly. So there's actually two wineries over there. Tell us about that. Yes, so the uh, the Double Trouble Wine Room uh, is the home of two wineries, Hoi Polloi and our friends uh, at Pagter Brothers Winery, Scott and Sydney. Uh, both wineries uh, are micro wineries, part of the exploding micro winery scene in California. Um, we get our fruit from up and down the state, a lot from Paso Robles, from San Inez, from Sonoma, Santa Maria. We bring it down here. We bring the fruit down here. We make it here locally. And uh, and serve it at the at the wine room. Now you get the fruit in a hole and then you stomp on it. Yes. Wow. Well, I mean, sometimes. No, uh, that's legit. I mean, if you're bringing in your own fruit, then who judges? Uh, like I go to uh, Albertsons and I'll stand in the fruit <laughs> department. What are you laughing about? I stand in the fruit department and I pat the fruit. I love it. Or I look at the grape. Yeah. I'm real careful at my grapes. Sure. So how do you pick your grapes? From we 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 pick the best vineyards that we can, oh, that we can get okay. fruit from. And, and we're able to do that. And we've, it's one of the things we spend a lot of time on is sourcing the best fruit from the best vineyards because that's what it all comes down to. You can't make good wine from bad fruit. Right. Now, I, can I get in the weeds a little bit? Because I'm interested in wine. The, the soil. I don't. So they're growing wine along the 101 freeway from here to like some. You, see, you go up to Paso Robles. Growing grapes, yeah. Yeah, grapes. I'm sorry. Did I say wine? Yeah. Uh, but gra- we know what you mean. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> how do you, I mean. Sorry, popping out in bottles all along 126. All but uh, the dirt seems so hard. Everything looks so dry and crummy. Is, uh, where, where you, are you getting your grapes from where? How about the Willamette Valley in Oregon, where I'm from? Uh, they make some excellent Pinot Noir up there. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's, you know, we could go all day on, on, on what creates yeah. excellent grapes, but uh, in fact... Uh, Everybody has an individual taste, right? Well, yeah, of course. Uh, wine is a very subjective experience, but um, grapes actually do well and get more concentrated flavor when they are stressed. And so, really? uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, planting them a little too close together and uh, not watering them enough and so forth, it actually, uh, oh, actually produces better fruit. I want to eat stressed Grapes. <laughs> How funny. Can I ask you an honest question? Can you be honest on the show called The Business Live on KHDS 1220? Here's an honest answer or question. Here's an honest answer. After two glasses of wine, can you really tell the difference between two buck chuck and, and a $500 bottle of wine? After two glasses, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. After... Eight Six, glasses, so no, yeah. maybe not. <laughs> right. now, how many glasses of wine? Well, do you, you know, that's a miscon. There's a lot of misconceptions about wine in general, and I think you know your whole hoi polloi thing. You know, there is a snooty end to it, and the tasting and the swirling right. around. Right. And you know, good wine. You know, if, it's like anything. If you if you if you smell it and it doesn't smell right, you, it's like food. You wouldn't put it in your mouth. No. It's kind of the same thing. Let me ask you, what what is the biggest misconception about wine making, and maybe in general? A lot of people don't even know that uh, people are making wine here in Santa Cruz Valley. Uh, no, I think most people are surprised about that. Um, our friends at Polcello Winery across the street here, right. and also in uh, in Old Town New Hall, New Hall, have a, a big uh, production facility over in the industrial district, and um, that's where we work. Both wineries, Pagter Brothers and Hoy Poloi, work in there. Uh, nobody makes our wine for us. Mm-hmm. We we get the fruit, we source it, we bring it in, and, and we do all the winemaking. 
but yeah, it takes place here. In, can you in do Europa tours? Way. Would you charge for a tour? Uh, you know, we, we we can do it uh, at at some point. Uh, we would have to set it up, and you know, you can't just like come by for a tour. Oh, because you know, I'd like to a, set up. It's wine. like the Wizard I, of Oz. You no, cannot but I look behind the curtain. I'd here. like to <laughs> <laughs> just go over to Double Trouble. They've got it right here. Isn't you that can, a great name? Double yeah, Double yeah, Trouble on name. Main Street, right? Yeah, right here, man. Double yeah. Trouble. What a great name. Tell us about that room. What's going on down there? It double trouble. It is. Um, it's a nice big room. It's on the corner of Eighth and Main, two four three three eight Main Street. Um, we've only been open for four months, so it's still uh, new to most people. Most people don't know we're there yet. Uh, it's a nice big room. Uh, you're welcome to bring f- food in. Uh, as we're under a winery license there, so we are not allowed to prepare food. But you can bring your own food in. A lot of people are bringing in their own cheese plates and charcuterie, or you can order from any of the local restaurants and bring in uh, food. And feel free to eat it at our place. We've got couches and tables. We've got a back patio now. Um, oh, that's a cool room. Yeah, it's nice and big. You could vibe. smoke cigars Great there. Vibe. I'd be over there in a heartbeat. <clears throat> smoke Outside. out on the back. Outside. Oh, can smoke in the back? Sure. No kidding. Yeah. I'm going to come over, seriously. 8th and Main Street, it's called Double Trouble. The owner is with us today on the show called Business of Life. Uh, back to uh, wine tours. So I would love to put a wine tour together, uh, $595 uh, to get in my wine club <laughs> tour. You could drive them around in your car all day, you know, <laughs> hit, hit both wineries. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get serious for a second. Not too many people actually, you do the whole process, Right. I mean, th- yeah. th- that's a real winery. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you know, there there are people out there in in the the greater wine world who who have a winery. I just made air quotes, uh, but they just they have somebody else make their wine for them. That, that's not you what don't. We're, no, we, double we're, trouble makes their own wine. Yeah. What's what's, Pac- what's the name Brothers, on the bottle? Packer Brothers and Hoy Palloy. What's the name two. on the bottle, Doug? Hoy Palloy is the the Hoy Palloy winery. How do you spell is Hoy Palloy? H O I H O I New Word P O L L O I and uh, Pagter Brothers, P-A-G. Why are you promoting Pagter Brothers? Let's promote our, Hoi Palloy. Our friends and partners in the Double Trouble let's, Winery. Let's Two promote, winers, that's why it's called Double Trouble. Well, let's Very promote good. Hoi Palloy yeah. on 8th and Main Street. Yeah. So let's talk about Jim, who's got a drinking problem. How, <laughs> if he comes in to Hoi Palloy, how, where do you cut him off? How many? Why, first of all, how big's the glass? That hey, you wait can, a minute. I'm a member of the club. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I'm in the club. I want to join so, too. Well, you I want, can. I, yeah. Is it the Hoy Palloy Club? We have. Yeah, there's a there's a Hoy Palloy Club called the Riff Raff. There's a, <laughs> a, a a club called the the Double Trouble Club where you can uh, participate with both wineries. What's and, Jim in the Riff Raff? <laughs> <laughs> they recruited me. You yeah. know, it was like. Uh, <laughs> Hey, here's here's a cool fact. Both of these guys and and some uh, all the owners are involved in music. They're musicians first. Yeah, I love and, that and part. And got into the wine wine business. Now, how the heck did that happen? Uh, well, because after they got out of their drug rehab, right? <laughs> yeah, they get into the, the wine business. We pursued one one passion that that, that that made us no money and decided to, to, to pursue the, an, another one that makes us no money. Consistency. I love it. <laughs> oh, no. We're going to help you make money. Uh, double trouble <laughs> at the corner of 8th. No, this is a fun place. This is a place where you can take your wife, do something different on a Friday or Saturday. Am I right on this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 5 to 9.30. We'll stay open if people are there. Uh, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 5 to 9.30 or 10.00. Sunday two to six, those are our hours of operation. And uh, sure, we get a lot of we get a a lot of parents in on date night. Um, anybody, if you go wine tasting in Paso Robles or Sandy Inez or Sonoma or Napa, uh, now you can do the same thing here. I'm coming over. Santa Clara I will Valley. come over and it's I'll bring the, a whole gang. But get you dodge my question. So how? Much is the tasting. If I want to taste like three wines, is it one oh, ounce? Yeah, no. So it's you can do a ten dollar tasting. So four wines, uh, four one ounce pours for ten dollars, or you can do seven wines for fifteen. Uh, you can also uh, buy is that wa- standard. That's actually really reasonable. Yeah, most um, most wineries charge more than that. Yeah, if you go to Napa, you can you yeah. spend in twenty twenty five fifty bucks yeah. sometimes. Cody, can you um, get your uh, your uh, millennials over here to uh, Hoy Palloy? I'm serious. Oh, yeah, of course, no wine. Yeah. That's, that's big thing with Eighth and too, Main Street. Can you come down there? And have you ever had a millennial walk in? Yeah, sure. We get a lot of a lot of people are getting into wine, especially this this micro winery thing. It's very similar to the craft beer movement. It's the wine industry equivalent of that. And uh, not only can you do the wine tastings, uh, four wines for 
10 or 7 for 15 you can buy it by the glass you can buy a bottle and open it there uh, have it with your meal if you want to bring in food um, and, uh, and anything well, you want one good thing I, I like about your room is there's no rush to move you out of there you know how you go in a lot of wineries and man they're just pushing you through these guys I mean, the minute you walk in, everyone's friendly. It's a beautiful room. It's a great vibe. And I can vouch for their music. They got really good music playing at all times. And that's kind of how you and I met. We started talking about music. And, you know, it's just a great place to go. Uh, it, it's one of the best rooms here. And I think now that uh, the, the new theater is going to open up, they're building a new parking structure, you're going to see a lot of action start from that end of the street and start moving down this way. Most of the action right now is down on the lower end of uh, Main Street. The building that's going up, is that a parking structure? Yes. They're building that awful darn fast. Is, is anybody inspecting uh, that this is getting done properly? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you seen how fast that building's going up? Well, yeah. When the yeah. government wants to build something, that's they right. can build it. That's right. Now, you're, I mean, what a location. 8th and Main Street? Yeah. Are you kidding Dead me? Dead center, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, we, we really lucked out, especially with the patio and back and the corner location, and it's a very nice, bright, and airy room. Um, and, and as Jim was saying, it, we want it to be comfortable. We want it to be a place where you can hang out. We always kind of thought of it as cheers for wine. Um, you know, a place where you can really come in and, and uh, have some fun and relax. Uh, and speaking of music, uh, uh, Scott and Sidney from Pagter Brothers are actual working musicians. I was actually an executive in the music business. I wasn't a good enough player to actually <laughs> continue playing in the music business, so I, I, I took the easy way out. Um, but those guys are still playing and are uh, professionally and have played with a lot of people that you would know. Um, and they're going to be playing at uh, the wine room on September 23rd. So Sydney and the Detours. A After our show, we should bring our audience over and 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 make them make them wait for eight hours. No, our he show opens ends at two. two. Huh? He says he opens at two on Sunday. On Sunday. Well, what we're on in Tuesdays. Why can't you open it a Tuesday <laughs> at two? Whatever you want. We we'll have a do. private screening. No, we should. We should. How many people do we need to bring over? Seriously, how many people do we need to bring over? Eighth and Main Street. Fifty people. Poloy. And you need to pick up the tab. 50? Yep. Is that okay? Yeah. I'll There's a public invite, folks. Coach picking up the tab next Tuesday. I'll pick something <laughs> up. I'll pick something Over up. Over double trouble. Yeah. Now, I met Sydney and uh, Scott, too. They're great people. Yeah. Uh, really cool, cool people. Uh, you got some good partners there. Yeah, we're looking forward. It's going to be a, a night of reds, whites, and blues. Ooh, I like September that. 23rd. Yeah. So, Sydney and the Detroit will be there. And, and, and now, what, uh, you were an executive in the music bu business. Did you have any uh, bands or anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, well, you know, I worked for some, some. Well, give me a name, somebody I'd look, know. Look, it was the '80s. I don't remember any of it. Oh, great! <laughs> Another out of work musician can't remember anything. The show's called "The Business of Life." So honored we'll have him back because uh, we need a winery right here in Santa Cruz, and it's called Hoy Poloy or Double Trouble. They've got two names. You got You're going to have to pick one name. People aren't going to remember two names. It's either I like Double Trouble. Because uh, I can't spell hoi polloi, but I like I like Double Trouble. That's a cool name. That's why we picked it. So that's uh, yeah. The Double Trouble is the name of the physical establishment. Double Trouble. Now where, where do you cut Jim off? I mean, if you see him into <laughs> like ten glasses of trying a Marilo, don't you walk up to him and say, Jim? I wouldn't it. drink ten glasses of Marilo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> what was, I'm a Pinot guy anyway. Oh, you're a Pinot Noir? Uh, yeah. Well, that's a kind of a chick wine. It is. I mean, no. and I go in there. You're and I just... six foot four, two hundred, and blah blah blah. I mean, you should be drinking a hearty red, man. I move up through as the evening progresses. You know, start light and move into the cabs. That's right. What? Uh, let's talk about your wines. What? What do you specialize in there? What? Are, what are the wines you have that you're most proud of? You have Thunderbird. <laughs> well, we've got. That's what you and I grew up with, yeah, Thunderbird. Yes, Do you well, have yeah, Thunderbird? Uh, we're not, not quite yet. We keep that in the back. Um, we do uh, Syrah. We do a lot of Syrah. We mm -hmm. do Cabernet Sauvignon. We do Pinot Noir. Uh, Grenache. Uh, we do Syrah Grenache blends. We have a Rose. We have uh, Scott and Sydney have a, a Chardonnay. Uh, what am I forgetting? A Grenache Blanc, a Viognier. Wow, that's There's, a big spectrum. Yeah, we've got, we've got about. 
15, 16 wines available at the wine room. So, nice so there's a lot of variety nice there. Variety, yeah. Good variety. You'll Eighth find and Main. Yeah, you'll find something that you like. Eighth and Main. Uh, it's called Double Trouble, or if you like Hoi Pelé, pick a name. The show's called The Business Life. We have to take a break uh, because that's what Cody says in about two minutes. Uh, when you walk in, are you greeted by a robot, or do you actually have somebody that knows about wines? It's the winemakers in there uh, oh. all the time. It's all it's you know myself and Ted and Dan, my partners, and Scott and Sydney. We all make the wine. Oh, okay. So it's uh, it's all about uh, hanging out with the winemakers. We love to talk about the wine. Love Is there to tell such you what a thing doing. as a bad year or a good year with a wine? Yes, uh, it, it it tends to relate more to the yield, like how much fruit is produced, uh, uh, as opposed to the quality, but uh, but that the yield affects the quality too. So yeah, there's a, but less so in California than in France, say, because in France it it rains during the summer. It can be cold during the summer. The the summer can end uh, prematurely, and all those things... You know, oh, that, it doesn't that, rain here during the summer? No, and that's, you know, huh. rain, rain's a bad thing. Might check, uh, might check right. Houston right now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> They're getting 50 inches of rain, and it's summertime. Yeah, not here, babe. No. So We're lucky got, if we get six inches. So you got the harvest coming up right around the corner, correct? Mm-hmm. That's an exciting time for a winemaker. What are you guys expecting uh this well, year well we already pulled in our pinot noir uh it, I'm, as soon as i finish here i'm going to go over to the winery and punch it down uh, and start working on it what does more. that mean punch Pun- it down mm-hmm. when the when the first thing you do with the grapes is you you put them in a big bin that's about four feet by four feet by four feet and uh and then you when it starts fermenting it produces co2 co2 pushes the grape skins to the top and forms a cap uh, sort of a, a, a firm cap, and the, you need to push that cap back down into the juice that's underneath it. Hmm. And uh, you do that about, uh, for small winemakers like us, very hands-on, we'll do that three, four times a day. Um, and wow. that's wa- one reason why small production wine is the best wine, because seriously, it gets hands-on attention, every bit of it. Uh, you know, we've it's got our personal love. Absolutely. Our, our nose literally in every barrel. That's awesome. Well, we'll All right, be Doug. right. Yeah, we got to take a break. Uh, KHTS 1220, you're listening. We're talking about wine today. Uh, it's a real winery. It's called Hoy Poloi or Double Trouble, 8th and Main. 8th and Main, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll be right back. There's a classic diner in town that combines old-fashioned dining with a hip 21st century menu. They call it trendy nostalgia. They call it Kathy's Deli. Kathy's Deli is a classic diner. Homemade jams, freshly baked breads, and even unique flavored coffee creamers made on site. Experience the fresh, new, yet old-fashioned taste of your local hometown diner. Serving traditional and unique breakfast and lunch delights every day from 7 to 3. Kathy's Deli on Lyons Avenue off Wayman Court. You choose your dry cleaner for convenience. Maybe it's time to choose a dry cleaner that is not only convenient, but does quality work at a reasonable price. Town Cleaners. They're in the center of our valley, and they offer free pickup and delivery anywhere in Santa Clarita. Town Cleaners, a dry cleaner who goes the extra step. Their stringent quality control ensures the highest quality cleaning and pressing for your garments. And now through February, save 50% on all dry cleaning orders. Town Cleaners on Soledad and Rainbow Glen. Start your finish at College of the Canyons. You need open classes? They've got them. Choose from three different campuses, Valencia, Canyon Country, and online. They make it convenient for you to start your finish. COC also makes college affordable with low enrollment fees, financial aid, and scholarship opportunities. Start your finish at College of the Canyons. Register now for fall classes. Visit canyons.edu and get started. Hometown. They're amazing, and every single one of their songs is amazing, except for like one. Your hometown station. Oh, we're having fun today. The show's dedicated to a wonderful mother, uh, Donna Hallaby. You raised a heck of a son, lady. Nice job. So I don't know anything about wine. I'm a beer that drinker. That was obvious. No, no but uh, but here's the thing. You buy, uh, what do I drink? Uh, I don't drink beer that often, but uh, if, uh, I don't even know what I drink. Uh, I guess I drink Anheuser-Busch because it's 100 yeah. calories. You just pop 
you pop the the right. little top and yeah. and you and you're done with it. But wine is a social thing. It's more of a uh, It's a hoi polloi. The name of his company is called Hoi Polloi. But it means riffraff. It's the opposite I know, of what you I, would think. Uh, yeah. Exactly. That's a good trivia question. What does hoi polloi I mean? I love it, yeah. So when you go to test, be honest with me. Yeah. You start with the light. I'm not a big white drinker, but, uh, but you, can, you, said you can start with anything. It's kind of how whatever your personal taste is. And you pay, I like uh, you kind of pair dry. Do they have dry? I oh, like yeah, dry. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The dry you, cab. A dry cab. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure they have that. But um, Do you have wine at home, bottles of wine at yeah, home? Yeah, we have tons of wine. And then you drink wine we every just, night? Uh, we've made two trips this year, one to Napa, one to San Inez, and we hauled back a boatload. So, yeah. You, know, that, you have wine every night? Uh, pretty much. You know, we're Italian. My wife's Italian. I'm Italian. My, my wife's so got to drink- have... Do you have a drinking problem? Listen, are we going to, like, discuss this on the air? <laughs> no, I don't have a drinking problem. Yeah, because problem. if there's a... Uh, I a- like to drink wine. I like the taste and smell of wine. Cody, uh, let's do your Millennial Minute. So uh, this is a little bit off the subject. Does your... Do, you're 25? Yep. Uh, does your mother know where you are? Of course. Oh, yeah. okay. But Didn't we cover that in segment we one. Did, the yeah. age and location but, of yeah, Cody. Yeah, we did. Uh, but people don't listen. They might listen for five minutes and then. Well, they... you told them to pull over beside the road. Can they leave now? Can they get back on the highway? Yeah. Okay. And if you have something better to do, go do it. Uh, do millennials drink wine? Oh, of course. Yeah. When's the last time you had a? Uh, be honest. When's the last time you bought a bottle of wine? We bought a bottle. That's the thing. I don't buy very many bottles. However, when I go out, like I had no idea. It was $10 for a flight there. I like go, to go down out. there. Yeah. I'll give you the money. Go down there, there and tell them the coach sent you at 8th and Main. Yes, say no more. You got you give me the money and I'm there. Well, maybe I'll loan it to it's you. It's a cool room. No, I'll loan it's it It's a great to place you. to hang out. And I got to tell you, you know, it's the, the good thing about it is anybody can walk in there. I go in there with my son and his girlfriend all the time. They're about Cody's age. They Michael's have a got time. a girlfriend? Yeah. Hot girlfriend? Yeah. Your son, I'm telling you, your son, unbelievable. How? Anyway, never mind. Uh, back to you. So what do you have on your mind for the Millennial Minute today? Um, I think it was you last week before the show said it, and I realized it's too true. I don't know what is the Millennials, but we can't have one screen on. I noticed yesterday where I was going to watch a movie. I put the movie on, and about 25 minutes later, I'm just reading about you know the Kyrie Irving trade on the computer because they're next to each other. And then I get bored reading the trade, take up my phone, and put a YouTube video on. So I don't know what it is. This but. is serious. No, I, I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's your age group. Can You want instant gratification. You want it now. And if you can't get instant gratification on one vehicle, you'll go to another screen or another screen or another screen. But i got to tell you, I do that too. I'm 60 and I do that. I sit on the, you know, I watch TV at night with my laptop open. Yeah, i got two or three things always going. I'm the same way. I can monitor two or three things at once, you know. You're 60. You look like you're 40. Thank you. Really? You're 60 years old? I am. Well, you've been blessed. I have. So, both of you have this. I I can only look at one thing. I, I can do one thing. That's it. Watch college football on ESPN or Fox. Yeah, you don't watch multiple games at once. I don't watch any. I don't know one television program. It's actually embarrassing. I don't know one program, and uh, I want to admit this to my conservative friends. I've now stopped watching Fox, and my wife is so proud of me that I don't even watch Fox anymore. Cue to fanfare. Da, da. Do you have fanfare music that? You hey, I want to ask you something. Know? Yeah. Ask it. You remember? You know, you're talking about multiple screens. Does anybody use picture in picture anymore? What does that mean? Remember how big picture in picture was when they were selling TVs, where you could watch. You'd have one game on, and you'd have the other game. No, in a small no, no, that you'd, didn't work you'd out. You click back and no, forth. No, that, that that doesn't happen anymore. Didn't right? they call that swap? On the, on yeah, the, it was on swap the, picture and picture. Yeah, pip. that didn't work out. That didn't, that didn't happen. No, uh, I. W- I mean, I know guys like you. You got four. Big 50-inch screens in your you know den. I've been, I've been in your den. It's awesome. You can watch six games at once. You know how many television screens I have in the It's embarrassing. Seven. Wow. Tele- I yeah. have one outdoors. Yeah, I do too. You're not living until you have a television oh, outdoors. i got a big one outside. It's unbelievable. How many it. people are in your house? Yeah. Two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife has her own TV room. We, don't, we, we spend about two hours a day, and then we don't spend any time. And she watches, you know, I know she's not listening. Uh, she watches the Kardashians, Housewives of New Jersey, all the Housewives shows. And I'm not allowed to watch them, you know. It's, it's like a soap opera. Coach watches it's, Dancing with the Stars, Bachelor. No, He's I've got ne- his own thing going on. No, downstairs. I've never, I've never, you watch that stuff. I've never uh, watched any of that stuff. I haven't either. Do you, Cody, watch that stuff? No. Um, no. Like when you go on the screen, uh, what, do, what, what will you watch as a millennial? Um, typically, honestly, reruns of old shows on Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. 
Do you, uh, Mim- wow, did you hear that? He doesn't watch any network TV. It's all Hulu, Netflix. Yeah, it's all stuff on streaming. Yeah. They're, they're streamers. I've got stock in Netflix. I think Netflix is probably going to be just awesome. Hey, what I'm thinking about, there was an article in Today's Signal written by a millennial. Did you read that? He's, he's Don't read the signal here. He's PO'd that, er, that people are giving millennials such a rough time about their attention span. and their. It's a pretty good little article. You should read it. It's in the signal today. What, which page? Ah, heck, I don't know. Uh, when you look There's only three pages in the signal. It's like one, Stop two, three, it it's already. Is, that's terrible. I know, but it's interesting. Uh, we have two minutes left on the show called The Business Life on KHTS 1220. My high school newspaper, do you think newspapers will, do you think they'll literally disappear? They probably will. I hope not, but I think they're headed that way. Yeah. Ten years, I'm a newspaper guy. We, me, me my too. wife and I, I do not move until we read the entire paper every morning bingo. with our coffee. I'm the same way. I have to hold the paper. What's your favorite coffee? What do you mean? I just told you, Stumptown. You, you didn't just tell me that. You told oh. me that off the air. I've never. Where do you buy that coffee at? Uh, Gelson's or Whole Foods. See where you shop. <laughs> See where you shop. You know, I'm shopping. But they've at, they've dropped the prices. What do you get? Food for less? Where do you no, go? No, I'm I'm shopping at Albertsons. Okay, well, that's decent. I don't that's shop decent middle of the road blue money. collar. I like it, man. I don't have your money. Dude, it has nothing going. to do with that. It's it's all about quality and convenience. I wish Brenda would have called in because uh, I wanted to know if they really dropped the prices, but she said they did. They did. That, that's amazing. Amazon's amazing. I, yeah. I mean, what he's trying as to do. As long as the quality doesn't drop. You know, Walmart's tried this, too. You know, the whole grocery thing, cheap groceries, uh, you know. I, I don't know how that works. I have no uh, no idea. I'm, I'm hoping. No, that. that's interesting. Let's pick that up next week because the original, they sold out. Uh, Whole Foods is done. So the original founder. What they sell for? Billions. Wow. Yeah, billions. That's amazing. Yeah. You'll sell your company. And Valencia, Amazon's, so is Valencia Amazon just going to par- buy everything? I wish they would. If they buy Valencia Production Partners or Rev Up Auto Sports, that's RevUpAutosports.com, 1VPP.com. <laughs> just kidding. RevUpAutosports.com is our sponsor. Both for sale. I'm hoping I get the wine Jeff company. Bezos, if you're I wanna listening. Get, I want to get uh, Double Trouble to sponsor our show. You're going to turn into a wino, man. Now I would love right to. Down the street. Double Trouble, 8th and Main Street. Come sponsor our show. Cody, thanks for the Millennial Minute. I learned a lot today, so I learned that you've got issues. Well, thank you. And thank you. Uh, I'll help you with your issues. Uh, Cody see, is a well-adjusted young man, i got to say. See you next week. I'd be, I'd be proud Tuesday at 1 o'clock.